I will press ahead to we'll update on the situation at IFA in terms of current status. Hold on one second, Doug. You're, we can't hear you here. That's a common occurrence. Yes. No, Daniel. No. <laughs> okay, we're good. You're good. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. All righty. Um, first of all, just a reminder, I realize a lot of you know the basics of the IFA, but um, uh, we have three uh, branches effectively, one on Oahu, you see on the top left, um, that's the IFA Manoa office that many are familiar with, IFA Maui, that's the Advanced Technology Research Center uh, on the bottom there, and where I am right now, IFA Hilo, uh, located on the UH Hilo campus. So I shuttled back and forth, I'm based at Hilo, uh, last week, I was two days at Manoa, one day at Maui, um, giving my friends at Hawaiian Airlines a fair amount of business as I try and keep up with all these parts in motion. Um, we also, I believe, are the largest owner operator of telescopes uh, in terms of numbers on Mount Kea and have a number of facilities on Haleakala as well. So when you add it all up, um, it's one of the larger university-based astronomy programs, I'm pretty sure worldwide. And um, Seven or eight months into the job, as you can imagine, it's a lot to, to just forget my head around and, and keep up with. A little uh, update on some of the IFA research that's been done lately. We have a fairly large uh, faculty conducting research in various areas, and I just sort of screen grab the, uh, the media releases that go out to the UH um, uh, new system, ranging from exoplanet research, of which there's been a variety there. In the middle, you see uh, Brent Tully's um, most recent media release on Lania Kea, the uh, supercluster that uh, our galaxy is immersed in. He's got some really cool videos that he's posted recently about that. Brent is uh, emeritus, but is as active as ever uh, within the faculty. He's, he's a great guy, good to be with. And then uh, on the far right, obviously, we do a lot of solar system research. It's a, uh, a media uh, release on what is currently called Far, Far Out, the most distant uh, planetoid that's been detected. Stellar remnants is another popular topic, pulsating stars, and then um, asteroids uh, from the standpoint of planetary defense. This is something I'm getting uh, a crash course in uh, because there's actually a lot of activity in the IFA. And I thought um, rather than focus on Mount Kea, uh, which I think the audience there is quite well versed in in general, I'd give you a, a little bit of a uh, more detailed glance at one of the facilities that IFA uh, operates on Haleakala. Uh, you see a nice shot there, I think an evening shot of uh, all the facilities. On the far left is the new $400 million uh, Daniel K. Inouye Solar Telescope, which is just entering operations. Uh, they are actually, uh, they have their office right next to ours um, at uh, Pukalani uh, on Maui. On the right hand side there, you see the complex operated by the Air Force um, and the AOS four meter telescope exposed there. It's got the coolest enclosure, I think, in astronomy. It's basically the entire enclosure collapses around the telescope to get maximum thermal coupling between the telescope and the air. And then a lot of smaller facilities. I'm gonna zero in on uh, Atlas, um, as you see in the sort of the, the um, blend of, of facilities right there in the middle. So Atlas is, um, part of the so-called Planetary Defense Network. This is a slide I grabbed from uh, NASA showing the various components of that, uh, ranging from assessment, mitigation, planning, coordination, detection, et cetera. Uh, IFA is, is in the middle of the top right there in terms of trying to search, detect, and track uh, various objects that might be an issue from a standpoint of, of uh, uh, colliding with, uh, with Earth. Um, Atlas is the latest addition to that. Uh, John Tonry is the PI on it, and uh, it's it's a fairly amazing machine. Uh, it's funded by NASA. Uh, historically, we've had data from uh, Mauna Loa and Haleakala. Uh, most recently, um, actually within the past six months, in Chile and South Africa, uh, Atlas telescopes have become operational. What that means is uh, essentially 24-7 all sky. Um, these telescopes provide um, uh, coverage of potential near-Earth objects that are approaching us. Um, and you see the little dotted line there, there's interest in building one more uh, on La Palma as well. I think a lot of people have heard about the PanStars um, NEO research uh, that's been conducted now for quite a few years, again, sponsored by NASA. Um, and the way to think about this is PanStars focuses in fairly small cones, quite deep. Um, Atlas is a short range, all sky. It's kind of the last thing uh, standing between us and a near Earth impactor. Uh, designed to identify objects that are perhaps 24 to 72 hours out 
um, and otherwise very difficult to, to detect with, with wider field facilities. Uh, and this is just uh, the latest version of a chart that's been shown over the years showing um, various contributions to NEO uh, de uh, detections uh, in um, sort of bright purple there and, and cyan, you see the pan stars and Atlas contributions uh, through about 2021. Um, we're building up the 22 data set right now, but basically uh, UH is responsible for most of the NEO detections um, of all ground-based facilities uh, worldwide these days. So one of the big changes for me uh, after 30 plus years of um, observatory operations is the education program uh, at uh, IFA, which I think a lot of people are familiar, it's my alma mater. And one of the things that really attracted me to, to be able to work directly with students uh, like we, we have at the IFA. Um, it's a multifaceted educational program offering BA and BS uh, degrees to our undergraduates. And you see we have about 70 or 80 uh, right now in the program uh, at UH Manoa's uh, campus as well as um, uh, the graduate program. We have about 40 students, uh, graduate students at this point. They are dispersed between the three sites that I showed you before. Uh, most get their uh, uh, coursework and master's degree at Manoa. And uh, in fact, I think this summer we're gonna get upwards of five more graduate students flying south over the summertime to start their doctoral research work here uh, at Hilo. Uh, so adding it all up, um, that's the scrolling on the right is the list of healthy graduates over the year from, uh, years from IFA. Have about 200, maybe 220 people grand total between students, uh, faculty, and staff members. Um, annual base budget from the state's about 10 million and uh, extramural funding is about uh, 20 million annually. So it's about a $30 million per year uh, program. And because I am super proud of our students and feel uh, quite connected to them, I wanted to showcase some of the latest additions to the, the world of professional astronomy, including Travis there on the far left. These are all um, researchers in exoplanets. Um, you see he's a um, NASA fellow at uh, Goddard, just starting that position. ZJ in the middle there, uh, he is a Sagan fellow at uh, UC Santa Cruz. And Ashley on the far right, who I uh, met last week, she's been racking up awards, um, including a very prestigious award uh, from the UH Board of Regents uh, last week. Ashley um, is the Henry, Henry Norris Russell Fellow, um, starting a new uh, position at Princeton University. So uh, IFA students are going to places, and uh, for me, it's one of the, the funnest things that I do is to attend the thesis defenses um, uh, scattered between the IFA sites. And, um, you know, bidding adieu and, and wishing good luck uh, these, these uh, future scientists that will um, change the future of astronomy in their own way. A little bit about the technology development um, here in Hilo is, is uh, the hub of a lot of the high tech work that's under development right now. You see Robo AO, that's an old video actually from California uh, before Christoph um, uh, joined us here at, at uh, UH. Uh, he is building uh, two of these units, I believe now, one for the 88 inch and one for the Naval Observatory and Flagstaff. Top right there, you see Mark Chun working with graduate students. Um, they are completely overhauling the UH 88 inch. Uh, it's going to be a, a very different machine by the time they're done. And it will include, of course, this robotic laser system, but also um, a new adaptive secondary mirror <clears throat> using technology that is intended to cut by, by about a factor of 10 the cost for adaptive secondary mirrors if we're successful with this technology. Um, and if true, uh, I think it could be of broad interest uh, in astronomy. Uh, I think he's a, he's about a year or two away from having the first uh, uh, on-sky tests uh, with this new A7 technology, but it's um, pretty cool. And uh, the combination of, of Christoph and, and Mike Bottom and Mark and others here in the building, uh, it, it really is a it's that sort of high-tech hub within the Institute here in Hilo. And then last, I uh, saw so uh, Mark gave a nice presentation from Keck. Um, this is a, a example of some of the recent uh, collaboration between IFA uh, and Keck with a uh, infrared pyramid wavefront sensor uh, deployed over at, uh, at Keck. It's also a example of Hawaii Aerospace, which is a company that Jerry Lapino spun off um, when he left IFA. So there's a lot going on historically in, in terms of the collaboration um, in this particular uh, piece of hardware that was built here uh, at uh, IFA Hilo and uh, an operation at Keck. And then finally, some of the community work that we do. Uh, I think I uh, always try and include some of this in my presentations. On the right, you're scrolling through the website for outreach at the IFA. And uh, this Saturday, Astro Day is back. Um, 
I know some of you would otherwise be there attending it or attend the conference here. Carol Kaichi does a great job every year of uh, organizing that. Uh, J.D. Armstrong uh, leads the charge with IFA's outreach program on Maui. The signature program is the High Star program. You see pictures here from the 2020 cohort. It's a very intensive sort of couple of weeks of uh, mentoring the summer. And then year round, they gather data uh, for uh, research projects uh, that go into a variety of, of uh, science fairs and uh, senior thesis work, et cetera, for students on, on Maui. I think I've heard Mauna Kea scholars mentioned at least uh, three times in the 90 minutes or so that I've been on Connected. Uh, so I will do it honors one more time. Uh, you see Mary Beth on the left and myself on the right. Uh, and our latest um, uh, sort of breakthrough within the program was the first awards for Lanai high schoolers uh, who received uh, time on several telescopes, including I think CHT. Uh, so we were there uh, recently, it's good, uh, really good fun. Uh, I'll be back there um, in June with Larry Kimura to give the sort of inaugural presentation at uh, the new one meter uh, observatory at the Four Seasons Resort. And um, looking forward to that and the new teaching telescope at uh, the Halepahaku and the Waipahu telescope, all plane wave telescopes being deployed um, in rapid succession for use by uh, student researchers in the future in Hawaii. And with that, and to prevent you from being further delayed with uh, your dinner plans, that's what I've got. Thank you, Doug. So we're in the discussion portion of our meeting. So any questions for Doug or any items for discussion? I think people are tired, Doug. <laughs> We've been at it all day. Don't blame them. Uh, yes, Andy. Hi, Doug. Um, so we heard some interesting plans that Gemini has for developing LSST follow-up capabilities. I'm wondering if IFA has anything or collaborative uh, efforts going on, uh, on, on LSST related activities. Um, not specifically LSSP, um, the, but there is a, a very concerted effort to develop um, rapid TOO and follow-up capabilities at the 88-inch. Uh, the intent is to um, have a much deeper coupling between that and PANSTARS. Uh, as you're well aware, CFHT has been, been used for follow-up research um, for objects detected at PANSTARS. And, uh, the intent is to uh, expand that uh, quite a bit uh, at the 88 inch when all this, uh, these upgrades are completed. So short answer is not nothing deliberate in terms of follow up with uh, the IFA facilities uh, for LST. It's we're, we're looking at more sort of internal follow up uh, between Haleakala and Nautic observatories. Other questions? Questions from the internet? Okay, well, hearing none, uh, let's thank uh, Doug 